Something that I always think about a lot and often is how salespeople struggle with price, price objections, and lying customers. And let me explain to you what I mean when I say lying customers. I see customers all the time probing for a better deal, getting discounts on deals when they shouldn't because a salesperson isn't prepared to handle the objection. If you wanna become deadly at closing, closing on the pencil over price, in any situation, you wanna watch this entire video. This video, I'm gonna give you something special. I'm gonna give you the exact word tracks that I use as I teach you how to close. So number one, I'm gonna do it myself, and then when it's done, I'm gonna send you over the word tracks. So you guys can print them out, memorize them, go crush it. Guys, let's get to the video. What I'm about to do is grab one of my coaches, and I'm gonna use him as an example so I can show you how this works. Now look, you see the number below? You see the number, do me a favor. Text this number right now. This is not my cell phone number. This is my community text line. When you text this line, I am going to send over the word tracks to you so you can memorize it and become great at this. Guys, we'll see you in just a second. Okay guys, so listen, I'm gonna hit Ryan with the price objection here. And what he's gonna do, he's gonna run through a one, two, three system, all right? And then we're gonna break down and go through the psychology of each one of the steps, why we did it that way, and then that's it. Remember, there's three types of salespeople, there's three types of uh, customers. Good, great, and unstoppable, okay? So the first one's gotta be good and it's gonna take that customer that's asking for a better deal. Right. He got it out of his mouth, he had the chance to ask for it, and then you're gonna close him down. But then there's that great customer, you know what I'm saying? That one that's just a little bit more difficult, you gotta be ready to go another round with him without discounting your deal or saying, hey, what'd you expect to pay for it? Saying something stupid, right? And then you got unstoppable, which means you got that one customer that's got the relentless approach right. on trying to get a better deal, and you gotta hang in there on the one, two, three account. And by the way, we teach the house, the mansion of how to be a great closer. This is the basic foundation. If you can memorize this, me and you can go very far and you will be the elite. So with that being said, let's run through this. Yeah, I'm gonna say, so hey Ryan, I appreciate it man, but look, um, I think the price is just a little bit too high. Yeah, I'd say, I would say, hey look, I'm glad you asked that Andy. So look, what we do here is actually called market-based pricing. Look, the research has shown 90% of my customers, they don't wanna haggle the price and they'd like to get the best price up front. That's why we actually use very expensive and accurate tools that find vehicles just like the one we're looking at right here in our marketplace right now. Then those tools, they price all of our vehicles for us to ensure we're always priced below market. Look, according to the stats on this particular truck we're looking at, it's priced 85% to market, meaning, look, we're actually 15% below fair market value. But look, not only are great at price, we're also high in all the critical areas important to you and your family, like price, payments, and trade-ins. And I apologize, I forgot to ask it. When did you want your first payment due? Beginning of the month, middle of the month, end of the month? What's gonna work best for you and your family? Hey man, I totally get it. And I'm glad that you guys have these tools and all that stuff, that's great. Um, so are you saying you can't get me a better deal? Yeah, look, I understand and I apologize, Andy. You see, I didn't explain my pricing policy up front. Look, we've learned, like I said, 90% of my customers, they wanna get the best deal up front and the other 10%, well, they wanna negotiate and haggle, but look, it's 2021. It's the age of transparency. I wanna take care of my customers the way they've asked me to. Look, if I was to mark this car up three grand, just to turn around and you mark it back down three grand, even though you felt like you won, would that be trustworthy or respectful? Absolutely not. See, I'm looking for a further relationship than just today. I don't wanna just sell you this vehicle. I wanna sell you every single vehicle you buy for the rest of your life, including your friends and family. So with that being said, have I offended you in any way, in any way at all, by giving you my best price up front? I don't know. Thank goodness, Sandy. Sign right here, let me get your new car cleaned up. Um, okay, so you're saying there's not a way at all that I can get any kind of discount. Yeah, well look, I completely understand how our price, it may seem just a little bit higher. The reason it looks like that is we're also hiring all the critical areas important to you and your family. You see, can't, we can't be the highest in all these areas and be the lowest in price of great business. It just doesn't work that way. But we can't afford to be just a little bit higher in price as long as we're the lowest in total cost since that's the real money spent. Wouldn't you agree? That's it. Guys, listen, this is a one, two, three mm -hmm. count on price objections. One, two, three. The first close, the first close, your customer, when you lay out the pencil, right? And look, we, we know hundreds of word tracks. I've taught Ryan, what, maybe four or 500 word tracks easy, now? Easy, easy for and, him. And, and these are just a couple of baby ones. This is the baby food. If you like this stuff right now, and by the way, if you wanna see these word tracks that he just said, yeah. 
make sure you text a community line. You'll see it right here on the screen. Mm -hmm. Text this number and what we'll do is we'll send you over all three of the word tracks so you can memorize them, tattoo them on your heart and you can use them. You don't have to be a second rated version of me. You'd be a first rated version of yourself. But know what you want to say. You see, when this price lays and hits the table, price, it's something that people think that they can negotiate with with car dealerships. Mm -hmm. It's just a known factor out there. So what they want to do is they want to get it off their heart and ask for a better deal. When they ask for that better deal, there's a difference between being prepared and truly being prepared. And like Ryan and like our top salespeople around the world that are earning a quarter of a million to half a million dollars and even more, yeah. they're learning all of our word tracks. They're, mem they're memorizing them like saying the ABCs yeah. when they were a kid. And basically what happens is that when you know it so well, you can say it with conviction, you can say it with believability, you can say it with confidence, and you can just say it with love and smiling eyes and say, hey man, you know what, I'm so glad that you asked about the price, and then go right into it. You're not nervous, you don't seem concerned, so your customer doesn't seem concerned. And since your customer asked for a better deal, guess what? They have the right to ask for that right. better deal and we're okay with it. Right. As a matter of fact, we expected it. And the fact that they got it off their chest and they were able to ask it and then we could handle it mm -hmm. in a professional situation without friction. Remember, during training, friction is good. Friction creates growth. But during negotiating, friction kills deals, kills deals and is bad. And if you notice, when I told Ryan, hey Ryan, I'm gonna have to have a better deal here. Did you notice he didn't challenge me? Mm -hmm. The most two important things that you could have during negotiation is trust and rapport. And you've worked for an hour or two to build massive trust, right? Me and Ryan have this trust. Yeah. Well, when Ryan says, hey Andy, man, that's my best price. I can't get you a better deal. I just get a little bit turned off. Mm -hmm. And I didn't wanna hear that. What I wanted to hear is that he was willing to work for me. But what he did is that he handled himself in a very professional manner. He served me with the word track back. He looked at me in the eyes. He didn't break eye contact with me. He didn't flinch. He didn't get triggered. And he didn't make a mistake and say some silly words he didn't mean to say. So what happens is we see salesmen crumble and fall apart by right. price objections every single day. And the reason why I put together this little format, number one, the first price is that we use expensive tools that price our vehicles for us. So it completely takes it off of us. Yeah. And it lets the, the, the customer know that the, all the research has been done. And we did it because we want to make sure they got the best deal. And we checked out the radius, we paid for the tools, right. it does the work for us. It's amazing. Now that I've explained that, I apologize, I forgot to ask you, when did you want to set your first payment, dude? And he diverts. Right. He goes into a diversion method after the first close. Now if the customer says, so you're saying you can't get me a better deal. Hey, I apologize. Look, this is completely my fault. Go into an empathy close. I didn't explain our pricing policy to you up front. You see, what we've learned is, and then you go into handling it without offending them. And at the end, you say, sir, have I offended you in any way, in any way by giving you my best price up front? Mm -hmm. The guy's gonna say no, and you're gonna take your hand and stick it in his chest or her chest, and you're gonna say, thank goodness. And the second you say, thank goodness, and you put your hand out, they grab it, you got a deal. Sign right here, let me get your new car cleaned up, thank you so much. Right. And if they hit you with the third round, it's the deal is that, hey, we may be a little higher in price, but we're lowering all the, what? We're the lowest in cost. Ownership cost. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Since we're the lowest in cost, we can afford to be a little higher in price. Because guess what? That's how great business works. Yeah. As long as we're the lowest in cost, we can afford to be a little higher in price. And what that means is that we service our vehicles to be like new for our customers, mm -hmm. unlike our competition. So a lot of the times you can continue to go, especially with a pre-owned vehicle, right. that's a great way to go. Mm -hmm. My idea with you guys is that I just want you to have something tattooed on your heart. We're gonna have some skeptics and they're gonna be like, oh, I handle it like this, oh, I handle it like that. Guys, listen, man, I made 716 grand my last year selling cars. I have 40 or 50 ways tattooed on my heart to go handle a price buyer. Yes, there's different ways. Yes, I know my customers. I'm always playing chess with every single one of them in front of me. I have master closer seminars every month and I teach 50 different ways to handle a price objection. Yeah. But this is the foundation of a great salesperson who wants to go to the next level and who wants to learn some word tracks and be able to sit there with the customer that's saying, hey man, I'm not paying that. I've never paid what somebody's asking or I need a better deal. 
And guess what? This is not a motive close. He did not say to me, I saw a cheaper one down the road at ABC Motors. That would be a motive close. That's for a different video. This is called price, price objections, and lying customers. Lying customers that say they need a better deal, right. only probing for a better deal. And here's the neat thing. Remember this, we negotiate every single day. These customers negotiate once a year. We buy cars, what, every day? We sell cars every day. But guess what our customers do? They buy cars once a year. And our customers are buying cars once a year and they're negotiating better than a salesman that sells cars every day. Guys, I think it's time to get back to the training board. I love you guys, I appreciate you, I'm grateful for you. If you've enjoyed this video, please take this video, like it, right. comment below, let me know what you thought. And then secondly, share it with one of your sales friends. Somebody that's in the sales business, this can work almost in every field. Yeah, 100%. And guess what? Share it with them so you can share the love. Thank you so much, I appreciate you. We'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to text the community text line so that we can get you the word tracks. Yep. Guys, we love you, we'll see you soon.